This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to pick up the Tower series and talk about lightning arresters. We're going to be looking at the ground rod clamp from Alpha Delta as well as their line of transi traps for the actual lightning arresters themselves. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. <laughs> Welcome back to the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association's YouTube channel. I'm KY4 BDP Bryant. A little bit cloudy today. In fact, we've had a little bit of rain already. Kind of a good day to talk about something very important in the installation of lightning arresters. Now, in this series, we've talked a lot about putting up the tower, and you should be able to see that right above my head or just over one of my shoulders. And that's great, but we haven't had a chance to get the antennas up there due to scheduling conflicts and weather. So, something that still needs to be done and can be done now versus waiting is installing a type of lightning arrestor system. And so I've gone to Alpha Delta, a, a Kentucky company, to, uh, to provide the components. Now I've purchased all of these components myself, so this is not a paid promotion. Alpha Delta though uh, manufactures a number of items in the ham radio field as well as for the United States government. And so. Uh, one of my mentors, AC4DM, has always talked up Alpha Delta as a good brand to go with. So that's what we're going to be looking at today are lightning arresters and how to mount those in such a way to protect your equipment and any surges that might come in on your coax. So in the next segment, let's take a look at what we're talking about when it comes to grounding and the lightning arresters. Okay, I've come indoors because the weather just isn't cooperating, uh, off and on rain. So what we want to take a look at uh, as a part of this system are, first off, again, from Alpha Delta, based in Manchester, Kentucky, uh, what we have are what are called transi traps. And we'll open up the uh, package here and talk a little bit more about this. But this is your lightning arrestor, and you can see you've got your two ends plus the little uh, knob here on the top. We'll talk more about it here in just a minute. I believe this is the model TT3G50 stud mount, and we're going to show you how to mount this onto another component here in just a moment. I bought this from HRO. I ended up buying four of these because I was thinking that I might have up to four antennas up on the tower, so uh, that way I'd be able to protect all of them uh, with the, uh, the transi traps, and I've got a spare if I don't ultimately use them all. The other component that we're going to be utilizing is the ground rod clamp. This is the model UCGC, and you can see ATT TT3G50 um, compatible uh, as far as that goes. And this is made out of a copper or at least um, uh, copper plated. And you can see the bolts that we have here to put these two ears up. And then the transi traps are going to connect to these holes that you may see or should see there on the side. And then we can see the back of that, the bolts, nuts, and washers. So we've got that part. So let's open up each one of these and let's see what we've got. Alrighty, so I've opened up one of the uh, transi traps and uh, we've got our instruction booklet here and it goes over some of the frequencies that it can protect against uh, the variable SWR that it introduces into the line, the connectors and so forth. Now you can get these with different types of connectors. Uh, in my uh, uh, shack and in, in other places, I use uh, 239, 259 connectors most of the time. So that is the type that I purchased. You can also get these with an N connector and a 239, or I believe straight ends, so, or just ends. So I ended up getting the, uh, the 239 version there, but they do make different versions. In addition to that, you can see that uh, we've also got our surge current arc plug, and that's this little knob that you see here on the top, the arc plug life, uh, as far as the number of times you, it can protect you, ultimately, the sizing, mounting, and so forth. Then we've got the uh, paragraphs over here to the right that you can read up on. If you want to read some of this text, you're more than welcome to, uh, to uh, pause the video and go through that. But this is basically a gas tube, and they talk about our gas surge arresters up here at the top. So I believe that's it, you know, as far as documentation goes. Um, 
the uh, there is a note down at the bottom insertion loss and variable SWR numbers are typical numbers dependent on lab equipment calibration dummy load type and so on so that's a kind of a catch-all phrase from a legal standpoint now Let's take a look at the actual transi trap itself. Now this one is the TT3G50 model. You can see we've got a 3522 here made in the USA. In fact, made in Manchester, Kentucky. Uh, and you can see here, do not over tighten, hand tighten only. Do not use tools for this knurled knob here on the top for the gas tube. In fact, if we go ahead and open this up, looks like it's made out of brass. You can see that there's um, uh, a little piece of rubber here to provide a good seal against moisture and then on the inside we have the little gas tube right there let me see if I can put this where you guys can see it but uh, it's not very large at all and uh, don't have my glasses on but you can see there's an end here and an end here and what you do is you drop it in now if we look on the inside I'm not sure how well that's coming in but if you look at the inside you can see that there's metal going across uh, right there. So we'll drop this back in, make sure that it is that way up so we can see the end is up and then we'll put this back on. You can see that this is supposed to uh, uh, trap it within the walls of this knurled knob here and uh, in fact it might be easier to go this way. That way we've got it within the knurled knob and then put this on top. So let's see if that is a uh, preferred method. <laughs> Brian is not the greatest when it comes to uh, picturing things in his brain. But yeah, that seems to go down well. The rubber seal uh, looks like it has expanded and tightened again to keep moisture out. Hand tightened only. And that is the Transi Trap. Now there are different models out there from other vendors. Again, this is this is from Alpha Delta. And this is not a paid promotional video because I bought all of this myself. Now let's move to the actual rod clamp in the next segment. Okay, so now this brings us to the ground rod clamp. Now, I went with this, uh, this particular model because I have uh, some new ground rods in the ground here to uh, protect the tower from static electric electricity building up and so on. You can see this is the model UCGC ground rod clamp for the ATT TT 3G 50s. And those are the transi traps, in fact, that I have purchased. In fact, there's a really good picture here, if I can keep the glare off of it, uh, where you can see uh, uh, some additional transi traps here and the type that I've purchased over here on this side and how they're going to orient when you put them on. And then this is already attached to the grounding rod. You can see that there's a little lug here, a grounding rod lug uh, of its own coming off this ear here going down to your ground rod clamp. Again, some text below that, and it says, be sure to put a small amount of anti-seize component, i.e. WD-40, 3-in-1, uh, uh, or similar type, on the nuts and bolts to prevent galling and freeze up between materials. Uh, because your transi traps are one material, you've got copper on these. So we'll need to take a look at getting some WD-40 in that particular instance. I think I've got some around here somewhere. But that's basically what we're going to see once we get it installed out on the ground rod. And you can see what it looks like without the transi traps installed there in the picture on the left. Again, nothing on the back. Pretty straightforward. And then uh, uh, it has the text below just to kind of describe the types of uh, transi traps you might use with it. And that is that component. And so really the next phase of what we want to do is to put this together so that it basically looks like the picture. And basically what you're going to have, you're going to have ears on opposite sides. You, you're going to put this together, similar to that right there. You'll have an ear on this side and an ear on this side that your transi traps are going to connect to. There are bolts, nuts, and washers to connect it here. Plus we have the grounding lug piece, this little copper piece here, that we'll need to, uh, to put to get, put on, on the lower end, I'm imagining, based on the picture. And then what we'll do is let's go ahead and mock this up as far as what it's going to look like. And then uh, maybe even put one of the transi traps on here in the shack. Alrighty, so let's, uh, let's kind of put together the uh, ground rod clamp. Now remember, the ground rod clamp is going to, there's the two pieces that are going to go uh, across your ground rod like that. So if we use my finger as an example, you're going to have the two pieces right there sandwiching the ground rod in between. And then of course you want to get your bolts in there. For uh, demonstration purposes here, what we're going to do is we're going to install two of the nuts, bolts, and washers and this ground lug that you see there 
uh, just to kind of show what it would look like uh, uh, if it were on the ground rod itself. Once the weather cooperates, we'll go outside and we'll actually put this on. But uh, uh, based on the picture, you just want to make sure or probably want to be consistent. Put your bolts in through the same in the same direction. You've got your washer here, and then you've got your nut with the little star bites uh, there. They're going to bite into this washer and give you a really good tight connection. And I'm going to hand tighten these, but unlike the uh, gas surge suppressor piece on the transi traps where you just hand tighten, you'd want to use a tool on this uh, to get it nice and tight, the two halves against the actual ground rod itself. All right, so that's our first bolt. Now our second bolt, nut and washer, we're just going to put in the opposite corner just again kind of mock this up and uh, put it in the other way. There we go, just to be consistent. We'll put our washer on and put our nut on with a little star washer built into it. And again, I'm just going to hand tighten that. And now we can kind of see what the ground rod clamp looks like mocked together here. Now, where does that guy go? Well, that would go on one of these bolts, typically on the downward side. If we looked at our picture over there, it would be on this downward side. So let's put one more bolt in just to kind of show this. And we'll put our, you know, I don't know if this should be next or the washer should be next. Let's let's put that on, put our washer on, and then put our bolt on. At least to give us an idea. And then we'll kind of straighten that out. And now we've got our ground lug on there, and you'll have some wire coming off of your ground lug. And that'll go down to your grounding clamp, your ground clamp, the little acorn that you're using for um, uh, clamping together your wire to the ground rod. A uh, little piece of wire will go into there. You'll back this little uh, screw out, put your wire through, tighten it down nice and tight, and then make sure that goes down to your grounding clamp. Uh, down at the bottom. Uh, usually they're called acorn clamps, but they go by different names depending on which ones of those you purchase. So that's the ground rod clamp with a few bolts in it uh, as a mock-up with the grounding lug here that you can attach another wire to, which is somewhat uh, redundant given that this is on your grounding rod and the grounding rod itself is grounding. But uh, that's what it looks like and that's how they've the pieces they've got in the package. We've got some left over for the actual installation. Now, what I'm curious about is what does the transi trap look like on the ground rod clamp? So in the next segment, we'll come back and put on one of those transi traps. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the transi trap out of the box here or out of the packaging as we saw a little bit earlier. And what do we have? Well, we've got the transi trap and the gas uh, tube. We've got an all thread here. We've got a bolt, or nut, excuse me, and we've got a tightening washer here. All right, so, um, hmm, wonder how this is gonna go on. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I did some of this off camera because, again, my brain doesn't work great. So, it seems to me the all thread, you can go ahead and put that in here in the bottom of the transi trap. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of billet aluminum here for surface area that ultimately is going to make surface contact with this ear. Okay, um, would dielectric grease be a good idea there? I'm thinking possibly. Uh, nothing in the direction says that, but uh, I'm thinking possibly that's the case. And I've also put this all thread in as far as it will go. So that's as deep as I can go into there. So that means we're gonna have uh, some of that all thread sticking out. And really the only thing left would be putting on the washer and your bolt or your nut. See if we can get that started. And again, we'll just hand tighten this just to kind of show it. And there we go. And so now you can see we've got our transi trap installed and we've also got uh, the bolt. And if we go back and look at the picture right here, you'll notice that they've got the transi traps pointed in that other direction. So I've got mine pointed that way they're probably going to want you to point them that way and that's so that that frees up this position if you leave it like that your cable is going to come out you can install another one there so really it needs to be oriented that way uh, like you see here in the picture just like that okay and then i can put another one below that and another one over here and another one over there and then all of this is going to affix to your ground rod okay so uh 
Cables will come from your antennas down the tower to your first ground rod or to one of your ground rods. You'll usually have more than one. And then you'll install this with your transi traps. Your cable will go in on one side from the tower and then this cable will be a patch cable going from the transi trap into your building in some form or fashion. Now in my case, I'm using a window mount which is not going to be permanent, but we'll do a patch cable from here to the window mount and from the window mount into the shack itself. Ideally, you want to eliminate some of those connections, but that's what I've got set up currently because I'm still trying to decide what to purchase and budget. But that's what that would look like with a transi trap installed and just visualize, if you will, uh, having the other transi traps installed uh, here, here, and here. So you can protect up to four different uh, antennas from lightning arresting with one of these ground rod clamps. And remember, you're connecting right to the ground rod, so you have very little distance between the surge suppressor and where it's gonna ground. So when the weather cooperates, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna put this on the ground rod itself and see what that's going to look like. So I'll see you in the next segment. Alrighty, so here's where we have the ground rod clamp installed on the ground rod. You can see the transi trap right there and we can see the little grounding lug down at the bottom I don't have the wire run to it yet but that will come up when I do the permanent installation but that's what it's going to look like on your grounding rod we'll back out just a little bit here alrighty well let's wrap up the video in the next segment well let's wrap this video up we hope you've enjoyed this video on using Alpha Delta's ground rod clamp system for attaching their transi traps up to four in this particular example and you got a chance to see it actually attached to the grounding rod itself and these types of videos are fun to do easier for me because I'm not overly mechanical but uh, not difficult really to put together if you like these videos hit that subscribe button and the notification bell put some comments down below the description let us know what you liked about and uh, hopefully this has been helpful especially if you're thinking about doing a ground rod someplace around your shack doesn't have to come off of a tower like what i've done but uh, could be used in other places for the lake cumberland amateur radio association i'm ky4 bdp brian 73 <laughs>